Over the last few years, the submission only movement has grown tremendously. There are shows popping up all over the world. Polaris, Sapatero, Submission Underground, it's endless. This movement won't be stopped and it keeps growing and we keep chugging along. It's EBI 12 now and boom, uh, now we can do a full female card, full 16 female flyweight card, submission only, regular EBI rules, alongside a four woman flyweight combat jujitsu tournament at the same time. When the UFC greenlit the first all female EBI show, my goal obviously was to get the best possible girls I could find at flyweight. I asked all the best girls and the best girl in the world at the moment accepted. And she's actually a former EBI combatant herself, Talita Allen Carr, 2017 black belt IBJJF gold medalist. And the champion representing Aliance, Talita Allen Carr. I win words IBJJF as a black belt in my, my weight class. But it's totally different because we fight by, by points and gi, and right now it's submission only. I did EBI four and five. I'm pretty excited because when I fought, I was a purple belt and brown, and right now I will come back as a black belt. I have been doing Jiu Jitsu for a long time, and uh, I love California, I always wanna live here. I think that's the dream coming true. I live close by the beach. Um, I don't have, like, I'm not a rich here, like, I don't have the perfect life, but just to be here teaching all day, I don't have no words, I'm just really happy, you know, to be here. When I fought, I didn't know much the rules because I thought like, oh, no, I'm just going to get and I'm gonna submit, you know? So right now, I'm more secure that what I'm gonna do because I understand the rules, I understand all the details, how to fight and how to win the EBI. I fought with Kira, I knew she was an MMA fighter and she was like pretty, pretty, have a good cardio, you know? And I, I knew she was dangerous, and she was like jumping around, did wrestle all her life, and she's a pretty tough opponent also. I thought I was going to submit her under 10 minutes, but she's really good, she scrambled a lot. My, I think my performance was really good, but I did got the submission 10 minutes, and I beat her on the overtime, on the second overtime, I get her on, on a beautiful arm bar. But after then, I, she's like, she was one of my best friends right now, so I don't think I will fight her again. <laughs> I'm not making apologize, but uh, I, I was teaching at 10 Planet Riverside, and uh, I was showing some takedowns, and like, I kind of fall to the side and I pop my ankle. Four days before the UBI, I got so upset, and I say, damn, I'm not gonna like run away, I'm gonna compete. When you um, deal with two persons, they know what is happening, you know? Like, people see that I was hurt, that, that I was not ready to fight. But I, I was kind of ready, but like, physically, not ready. So, uh, I, I lost by the rules. If you wanna be a good fight, you also need to have good attacks and good defense. And the first time that I, that I competed BI, I did not realize that, but the second time when I lose, Dude, I realized that and I say, I need to be good at defend too. My, my game cannot just be aggressive and just pass. I need to be patient and I need to know how to defend myself with each situation, you know? And I did learn a lot. Like, I think that was one of the best lessons that I, that I learned there, you know? I don't like much the rule, but it's a challenge, you know? I realized, I was like, dude, that's a challenge. I'm not gonna say no for like for a fight, you know. And because I wanna fight again, I wanna show that I pay more attention to the rules and everything. I think will be the best thing because I'm gonna prove myself, you know, that time. I'm not gonna 
thank what people think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there and to finish the job that I start on ABI4. You know, I have a kind of gold this year, and uh, I did my first gold, uh, two gold, three golds, like was being Pan Am, Wood Pro, and uh, words as a black belt. Dude, I'm ready. Like I am, I'm gonna fight with my heart. And, uh, A potential epic matchup in EBI 12 can be a rematch of Lila Samaja versus Talita Allen Carr. In their first match, Talita dominated position in the uh, regulation round, but in overtime, uh, Lila pulled it out by seconds. Lila has improved tremendously, and uh, it's going to be very, very uh, exciting to see how it all plays out. I was a competitor at EBI 5. I was actually an alternate for one of our 10th Planet sisters who got injured. I had two weeks notice and I was going up against really high level Talita Alencar. I'm always ready, so that was one thing. I was ready, I've been training, I'm always training. But those last two weeks I had to turn it up to the highest level I could. Main focus was try not to get submitted. I went out there and I gave it my all. I had only heart because I knew that I wasn't gonna submit, I wasn't gonna tap. So I took it to overtime and uh, we drove overtimes like crazy in here and I got the lucky straw, I won by overtime. So it was an amazing feeling and being on that stage was, it was nerve wracking but it was fun and I think that uh, being able to have that experience gives me a little bit of a nudge over the other girls who it's their first time on that stage. Coming into this tournament, into EBI, with a game plan of kind of getting on top and holding position, not really gonna work in here. I mean, if you wanna do that, you wanna, you wanna be a passer and then just stall and hold out and not let anybody do anything, cool, I'll take you to overtime and I'll tap you there. You gotta go after those submissions and after those sweeps and, and really have that fire from, from all positions. The Planet system is really focused on no-gi jiu-jitsu, being able to control the body. So not having to use grips and clothes to sweep people or hold people down. You're actually using controlling with hooks and their body and their head and their legs. And I think that it makes you even more powerful as far as controlling somebody because you have to use their body against your body and not clothes against clothes. When I was 14, I was attacked in the streets of Paris, and my uncle took me to the bomb squad to start doing Muay Thai, thinking that it'd be a great way of self-defense, which it was, and I took that as far as I could, 1-0 uh, in Muay Thai. When I started jiu-jitsu, because Eddie Bravo knew me since I was 14, and he kept telling me, come, like, come take jiu-jitsu, it's the new thing for girls, it's the best self-defense, you'll love it. And finally, when I get, got through that rusty, kind of uh, beginner-itis of jiu-jitsu, because it's hard to get through that first, you know, that first uh, rusty part of jiu-jitsu. Uh, I had to get all the calluses out of the way, and when I did, I fell in love with it, and I started competing, and it just was a whole nother love, um, and a whole nother competition. I had a job, and doing jiu-jitsu, so it was kind of a, a nice way to have competition at a high level, and be able to have a regular life, so. That's really what got me into it. We have a 10P WSD, 10 Planet Women's Self-Defense, trying to make that grow as much as possible because I think that jujitsu for women is, it's fire. I think that that's, every woman should be able to do jujitsu and, and be powerful off their backs and uh, have that confidence and that empowerment that I have. And I'll be ready, I'll be ready for anything. I've gone up against uh, some some high level girls and I've never I've never felt super threatened I feel like I've always been able to keep my head in the game my heart's always in it I push hard and I don't give up to me it's really about showcasing my skills and trying to submit each girl in each match when all four of those matches by submission just for the recognition of the submission only. It would showcase that I proved to them that I worked hard and I, I deserved it. 
because I did the training and I did the work. And also prove to Eddie that all that hard work he's put in on me and that trust he's put in on me as one of his highest level ranking girls here at 10 Planet HQ, that he's put in all that faith in me to invite me to his tournament. It, it really puts fire in my heart and all I want to do is showcase my skills and make it to the top. Australian black belt star Lachlan Giles and his student Craig Jones both have tremendous upset wins in EBI. In comes Livia Glukchowska from their camp. She's a black belt under Lachlan Giles, so uh, um, she could easily be the dark horse or can be considered the dark horse or, or even a favorite if you look into her game. All those, uh, th those animals over at Absolute MMA have studied the leg lock game. They're right on top of the evolution, so anybody coming from that camp is, uh, can be considered a favorite. I'm Olivia Glukowska. I train at Absolute MMA in St Kilda in Melbourne. Uh, I've been training Jiu-Jitsu for about seven and a half years, but I've been an athlete for probably about 25. But I think what got me into Jiu-Jitsu, I wanted to actually just stop with elite sport because I get really obsessed and I get really into training. Um, and I decided it was time to start my university degree, get a career, get a job and be an adult. Um, and I think I started Jiu-Jitsu just for fun. I wanted to keep fit. It looked really interesting. It looked like something I had to um, really think about. It. Probably three months into it, I did my first competition and became obsessed, just like with any other sport. So I traditionally started training in the gi, and that's where my comfort zone was. I, you know, uh, I felt much better at it. And I think it just comes from um, being familiar with the gi and that's what most clubs do. They train, uh, you know, gi techniques the most. Um, so doing no gi and doing submission only and doing leg locks was something I was really unfamiliar with. And so I was scared of it. But uh, at the moment, you know, people think I'm a guard player. I love passing, I love pressure passing, even though I'm small. I love guard, I love submissions, I love leg locks. I wrestle three or four times a week as well. So um, I think my goal in jiu-jitsu is to be really, really well-rounded. And I enjoy that game. I enjoy learning and I enjoy, um, you know, just learning something new every day. And whether it's top, bottom, wrestling, leg locks, to me, it's all jiu-jitsu and I want to be good at good at all of it and I absolutely love no gi but there's probably just less events around the world than than gi events traditionally so I do them less it's expensive to travel around the world to you know get one opponent um, at a random competition okay. <laughs> you know we've had Lachlan Giles and Craig Jones on EBI before causing a few upsets so I hope, I really hope to follow in the footsteps and I'm so happy to be, um, you know, to have them as my training partners and my coaches. At Absolute MMA in St Kilda, all the advanced guys and myself and a few girls have started to do uh, a lot of, you know, submission only, leg attacks, heel hooks, and a lot of wrestling. That's to get us ready for competitions such as EBI. I'm just so excited to show the world that, you know, there's 16 women in the world, and that's just a very small selection of, of a top few fighters that can put on a really good show. And I think it's an amazing opportunity for us, and I think, uh, you know, we have to stop thinking of it as women's jiu-jitsu or, you know, the girls are doing something good in the corner. We're actually a massive part of this. We're here and I'm just so excited to show the world what we can actually do. A lot of us have either trained together or competed against each other before. To me, it's a completely non-emotional event. Of course, I want to, you know, I love winning. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's a war. As soon as the fight ends, we go back and we dance and drink beer like everyone else. But when we step on that mat, we have so much respect for each other that we just go for it 100%. We do a lot of specific training from positions that come up a lot in Nogi. Uh, and then we also uh, do a lot of specific training rounds from armbar or spider web and from the back. So really we try to simulate the um, competition scenario and EBI as much as possible. So we've, we've actually, you know, studied a lot of the guys, um, and especially because uh, Lachlan and Craig um, 
they're competing against them. So we study uh, all the top guys quite a lot and in depth. Um, and we try to, you know, uh, not so much copy, but uh, play that style of a game and make it our own and make it better if we can. The bracket is absolutely stacked, so there's going to be no easy fights. Uh, there can be upsets left, right and centre. I think with the style of competition as well, submission only, no gi and uh, add some leg locks into it, we'll put on an amazing show. When you step on the mat, it doesn't matter where you are. I could be, you know, the World Championships or at EBI or at my own gym training and I'm just as focused and nothing else exists but what I have to do in front of me. When the public announcement was made that EBI 12 was going to be an all-female show, uh, world-class BJJ black belt from Checkmat, Patty Fontes, she contacted me quick and wanted in. I didn't have to twist her arm. She wanted in from the get-go. Uh, her style's perfect for EBI. She's, she is well-known in the points game, but she's submitting everyone in the points game. So I think she her uh, gi skills will translate to EBI beautifully and uh, she has two matches against Talita Alencar and they both have a win so we can see a potential tiebreaker in EBI 12. I'm Patti Fontes, I am black belt from Czech Match and I trained Jiu Jitsu for 11 years. <laughs> I started when I was 15 years old with Checkmat and I just moved here when I was already like purple belt to train under Lucas Leite because uh, all the uh, big tournaments were here back on time and I wanted to, um, to try something uh, bigger on my Jiu Jitsu. And what makes me happy right now more, more than anything is that like ever since I got my black belt I won all the Nogi Worlds with submissions in all my matches, so I'm Victor. I've been competing for 11 years in, in IBJJF rules, you know, and, and all my titles are in IBJJF, but I always like the style of the submission only. I'm not saying that I like it better or that I don't like IBJJF or that one is better than other, but I want to try the most of the grappling, you know, in any rules, you know. So I like grappling in any rules, so. And I like the idea of submission, don't have like a drawing. I got uh, already uh, uh, upset with results. They're like world uh, finals and lose for like advantage and stuff that I really don't, don't believe, you know? And so I think that's a great uh, experience to see um, how it works with the girls that not always have opportunity to fight and also because of the division mix and, um, and see how it's going to work for submission style, you know? I don't have like a, f a, a favorite spot. I think uh, I can be like very dynamic and go everywhere, but I really like uh, back attacks. Doesn't matter from the bottom or from the top. I just like being on the back. Maybe because I'm a small girl, or maybe it's a quality of all the small girls. We used to be um, smashed all the time and be under pressure. So that's not a problem for us, you know? So we can handle a lot of pressure and we are very patient and precise in what, like, don't lose the opportunity because it may not be that many, especially on the gym, you know? <laughs> so you gotta take it when you, when you see it. I feel comfortable. I mean, I know there's heavier girls on the division, like Tummy, Pretty Dangerous Girl, and other girls that may be a little heavier because I compete my no gi titles for 114 and it's 125. I, don't, I think it's just a detail. When I first came here, and it wasn't really uh, about the money uh, because I wasn't really sure if I wanted to be here, so was more to prove myself and finding myself in what I wanted to do. And, and I, I got the opportunity to have all the support from my team and from my coach and from my family to do that and find myself. And, and now, of course, I do for the money too because I have my life and I mean, I'm in a, in a foreign country and I'm alone, you know, so. Of course, the money, it's always uh, something that I want to use for build stuff for Jiu-Jitsu. That's the main reason for me to make money too. 
but the title and the fights and the feeling, it's a, it's, I, would, I would say that's the same, you know? I don't go more for the money or less because of our, no, it's a, a balance of everything, you know? I came here for jiu-jitsu, so I would not take anything else, you know? You guys got the best of best girls from different weights, you know, and you're combining them together in a fair weight for everybody, you know. And um, I don't, I don't really remember the last time I've been in a bracket that was a bunch of good names in, you know. It's really like, it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. Since she was 13, Erin Blanchfield's parents brought her to me. They'd come to LA on vacation once a year and they, they'd roll through all the schools and they made 10th Planet at one of their stops, then come in and, and she would do great against my girls. She was a little 13 year old super athletic girl and as the years passed, uh, now she's 18 and she found out about the female show and she goes, Eddie, Eddie, I'm 18 now, can I do this? And I said, hell yeah. And um, now that she's over with DDS and working out with the guys at Henzo's, Jesus, I could only imagine uh, what it's gonna look like when she goes out there against these world-class black belts. Man, we might see the greatest uh, upset ever in EBI. If she takes it all, can you imagine? Um, I think that it's great that they're finally doing a full female EBI. I don't think it puts any more pressure on us, but it definitely wants us to make us perform at our best like we would at any competition. Um, and it's been a great opportunity to show the world that women also can compete at this high level um, in front of everyone and be just as good, if not better, than the guys. I competed in the Nogi Pans and I won first place in my weight class and also the Absolute. Competed in the grappling industries and I won the female Nogi Super Absolute, first place. And yeah, I've done many Nagas and Grapplers Quests and I have a bunch of those belts over in my house in my room stacked up. I think the EBI rule set um, is what makes the EBI so successful and makes people want to watch it. It takes away any of the boredom that comes with watching Jiu-Jitsu and makes it very entertaining and fast-paced. Oh, oh, Twister, I'm coming, Great Gondra! Since I found out I'll be competing in EBI 12, I've been training almost exclusively Nogi. I've been practicing a lot of leg locks as well as the game that I normally play and I've been training the overtime rules extensively. I'll take any submission that comes available to me. I don't have any certain submission that I am looking for. I have a very wrestling style of jiu-jitsu. Like, I mostly stay on top and I have high, like strong um, top pressure. And I like passing guard and getting to side control and working my submissions from there. Uh, winning every single one of those matches and getting the $20,000 and having that title um, would be the best case scenario for me. Uh, when I look at the girls that I'll be competing against, I feel confident that I'll be able to beat them. I have looked some of them up and I plan on watching some videos to better understand what they do and I have grappled and trained with some of the girls that are competing in this tournament as well. I definitely have the techniques and strategies and power to be able to beat the girls that at this competition. Another day in the grind, getting ready for EBI 12. Um, I'm here at Henzo Gracie NYC. About to get some training in with John Denneher and his death squad down in the dungeon. I'm feeling super strong, sharp and ready to dominate at EBI 12. Now that I'm graduating high school, I'll be training about twice a day. I'll be coming into the Henzo Gracie Academy to take John Denneher's classes about like twice a week. Um, and those classes are great because he knows all about the EBI and he loves Nogi and that's his passion and there's a lot of girls to roll with. Um, but also in my gym in Jersey at Silver Fox BJJ, um, there's a lot more attention on me and it's much more personal. So having both of those will definitely have me ready for uh, winning every single one of those matches and getting the $20,000 and having that title um, would be the best case scenario for me. 
Um, winning the money is a very good bonus. I would do this tournament whether it had money in it or not, but having the money is an extra motivation to train even harder. <laughs> I would probably save it or buy myself a car. <laughs> I just got my license. Um, but I've been doing kickboxing and Muay Thai fights. My record currently is seven and one. And I've gained a lot of experience in competing from those uh, tournaments. Winning the EBI title would be a great honor and I think it would be a very good step in the right direction for me because I want to pursue MMA following this EBI and having that everyone knows that I'm very good at Jiu-Jitsu would be a very good starting point for me in my career. I've been training all my life and I've been training very hard. The people don't know me yet, I just haven't had the time to have people know my name yet, but this will definitely be the opportunity that I can get to have people remember me. The inside scoop is that most of these EBI competitors uh, think Tammy Musumichi is going to be the toughest battle of the night. And if you look at her career, she's an Abu Dhabi veteran, uh, fights at the highest levels in the IBJJF tournaments. Tammy Musumichi can easily take this whole thing. I've been competing in jiu-jitsu since I'm around eight years old. I think my first competition was in 2003, and um, I did some in-house tournaments in New Jersey, but I also did, my first big tournament was Naga, and I've been competing pretty much non-stop since then. I really don't know what's, like, my style or what styles are. I just try to, like, do jiu-jitsu where I could do well in any rule set. Um, honestly, I don't feel like there's any specialty. I try to be well-rounded. In regular jiu-jitsu, even in submission only, usually in submission only there's a, uh, a, the, a winner is decided at the end if there's no sub by whoever was most aggressive. Of course, there's always biasness towards that and favoritism. Like, everything involves like biasness and point of view. In EBI, it's straightforward. You either get the sub, and then in overtime, it's whoever holds it the most or who gets the sub the fastest. It's black and white, cut and dry. Nobody has an influence in it at all. It's just like the skill is showing. So I feel like EBI is the most straightforward, black and white. Like it's you either win or you lose. There's not like, oh, the ref did this, the ref did that, because the ref's not involved. I really love the overtime rule. I mean, a lot of people I know are against the overtime rule and stuff. I think that to be considered great at jiu-jitsu, you have to prove that you could get out of bad positions or you could even function in bad positions. I feel like that's a major part of jiu-jitsu and Eddie Pravo has actually put that in, on display. I think that's great. I really support that. I think it's an honor to even take, be able to be part of an EBI tournament because again, I've been a fan of the, the format for a long time. And, um, but yeah, that would mean a lot. But honestly, I'm just gonna go and do my best. Like, I don't have any expectations or anything. I'm just gonna do my best and see what happens. Have fun, you know? Honestly, I do jiu-jitsu. Again, I changed my mindset with jiu-jitsu. I do it more because I love it. Like, for example, I've been, I just, I realized even last week training, I was like, I just love training and meeting new people and training with new people. Like, I just, again, I know I keep saying it this way, but I just feel like, I just am so excited to be able to take part in EBI. Like, if I win, that's great. If I lose, I still want to make sure I gave my best and like really made the experience like a good experience. I try to make Jiu Jitsu my happiness in life. Like, I have stress with school, I've, like, I'll have stress with work one day, and I try to make jiu-jitsu an enjoyable experience. I don't try to like, think too much about it, I just try to like, like, use it to 
put all my energy into it, my like energy to get to like feel better and stuff. I, I honestly use it as a uh, as a good part of my life. Like I try to like I don't want it to be a negative part of my life. Like once it becomes negative, I have to get away from it because I just want it to be positive. So yeah, it's a major part, but because I also it's I'm trying, but I want it to be also a good part of my life. Kayla Patterson's been trying to get into EBI for a while now. She keeps pushing and pushing, and here's your chance, Kayla. Let's see what you can do. I would say that my most important victory so far has been winning the Nogi Worlds. Um, I was a purple belt in 2015 and 2016, and I won both titles uh, two years in a row. So I was really stoked about that. I actually just quit, I quit my full-time job on August 1st. It'll be my um, last official day, so I'm going to focus 100% of my time to promoting women's jiu-jitsu um, here in Memphis. And so I was like, I, don't, I feel like the timing couldn't be more perfect than what it is. So. Having the chance to be the first female EBI champion is incredible. I don't even, I don't have any other words other than incredible, and that one doesn't even do it justice. Um, like I get, a little, I get a little chills right now thinking about it. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely excited for it. I, it's just incredible. You know, we spend a lot of time on the mats. We put our body through a lot of work. We spend a lot of money traveling to be able to get to the tournaments. And um, it's pretty heartbreaking whenever you lose some pretty major titles because somebody's friends with somebody else or you know, just because somebody thinks that maybe their style of jiu-jitsu was what they were watching and that's what they think was better. So I really, I really like the overtime aspect, so there's no, no judge. Definitely to get ready for this is um, just training leg locks. We, we focus a lot on IBJJF uh, roll set, so it's been really cool to kind of break out of the comfort zone and break out of the box and, and plan it. So it's almost like a whole new world. So it's been a lot of fun. What Jiu Jitsu means to me is way more than a workout, way more than a martial art. It's, it's a lifestyle. I mean, the bonds that you, you create with your training partners on the mat are so much deeper than any other ones that I've ever experienced. Obviously going out competing and winning is amazing. You don't go compete to lose, you go compete because you want to test yourself and ultimately your goal is you want to win, you want to be the best that there is. But I think that with competition you learn how to handle defeat, you learn how to fall down and you learn how to build yourself back up. And then you learn how to support your teammates or your friends whenever they fall down. And that. There are low times, but you, you know, if you band together, you get through them, and then you go kick ass for the good times. We have a pretty solid group of girls right now that compete pretty regularly. Um, about 18 of us that train regularly, I'm say about half of those girls compete um, actively. So whatever I can do to help spread how awesome Jiu Jitsu is in Memphis and help people understand why I love it so much and then let them love it too. Sure. To be competing on UFC Fight Pass for the entire world to see, um, for me as an athlete, that is just, it's amazing. I don't, I mean, it's a little bit nerve wracking too. I mean, there's going to be so many people watching, but I mean, this is a milestone. There's so many people in the out there that compete and they train daily that aren't even going to ever come close to having an achievement like this. Just to be able to step on the, the stage with the competitors that are already on this lineup. So I mean, to be able to say that I'm going to be one of the first 16 females on the first ever EBI, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's awesome. And then it's going to be on the Fight Pass, the UFC Fight Pass. So that's, again, little chills. What you can expect to see from me on EBI 12 is a lot of drive, a lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of aggression. 
um, take home the title. The very first person to contact me for EBI 12 was Jason Manley. He was like, yo, get my girl Rachel Cummings in this thing. And, and I, I've known who she was, I've seen her compete. Her jiu jitsu is super slick. She's, she's perfect for the game and, and uh, she wants it real, real bad. And um, anybody coming from Jason Manley's camp, if you know the game, you know she's gonna come with some serious fire. My name is Rachel Cummins and I train at a Gracie Fighter Dojo. I am a purple belt under Jason Manley and I have been training for almost six years. What got me into Jiu Jitsu was I used to play volleyball in college and I, I messed up on my grades. So I kind of wanted to redeem myself and do another sport. <laughs> that I can do really good in. And I thought that I would do really good in Jiu Jitsu. So I literally started doing Jiu Jitsu for one week. I trained maybe for three days and I did my very first competition that weekend. And I got second place and then I was like, I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I went against a blue belt actually. And then after that, I started competing every single month. And then I just fell in love with it. So my competition history is I would, when I first started, I would do lots of grappling X. I mean, that was like the very beginning stage. Then I did Best of the West. Um, then I started doing Grappler's Quest. Um, and then I did Worlds. I actually did Worlds like a week after my MMA fight and I wasn't even prepared. I kind of just did it like randomly. You know, I honestly, I had been like drinking and partying the whole week because I had my friends there and I just got over my MMA fight. And so I just did it real fast and I wound up getting third place in it. And I wasn't focused on it at all. I was just focused on the submission because to be honest, I don't even know how the points work. I only know submission because that's the only thing that I go for. So I think that I'm gonna be at pretty good advantage uh, between all the other girls because that's the only style that I know of. I go for submissions from every position. So you're at danger from every position. So I uh, have a lot of confidence going into this because like I said, I never ever play by points. <laughs> I think the thing that makes me different is I threw myself in jiu-jitsu competitions when I wasn't ready. <laughs> and I just kept competing and being really creative without actually knowing the basics at first. And then once I knew the basics and you put them all together with my creativity, it was just completely different. So I don't really know how to say if I'm real flexible or whatever, I'm flexible, yeah. But I think it's just more being very creative. To be a part of EBI, I've told my coach for a long time that I wish that they had that for girls. I would always ask them, do you know if they're going to ever have it yet? I, if they do, I'm ready, you know? So the minute I saw that they were going to have that, I told them to contact Eddie right away. And literally within 30 seconds, Eddie was like, okay. Being a champ, uh, at anything is very important because I think that it will open a lot of doors to a lot of things. I know the money is awesome and I would love the $20,000, but I think that if you win ABI, it's gonna look really good in the Jiu Jitsu world and, and in the MMA world. I think uh, any sponsors is everything. I wanna be the best grappler in MMA in general, mainly in MMA, because that's my main goal is to be you know, a UFC champ, but um, I, I love doing grappling tournaments too. I mean, that's my love is the ground. Fiona Watson, a high level black belt from the East Coast is representing Fight Club. I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. I train at Notorious MMA with Professor Marcio Bittencourt. And I've been training for 13 years. When I heard they were doing a all-female EBI, I got super excited. I, uh, a lot of people had tagged me on the post that uh, Eddie Bravo had put on Instagram and Facebook, and seeing my name there was very exciting for me. So I was really excited, and then I got the message that I was invited, and it was a really great experience. <laughs> There's definitely the um, the unknown. I would say the unknown is uh, a little bit scary as far as going into EBI, but I train hard and I know I'm prepared, so I'll be all right. 
I currently train with my professor, uh, Marcio Bancourt. He's my primary uh, professor for this preparation. I represent his association. Uh, he's from Brazil and we have associations like pretty much all over the world. Fight Club Jiu Jitsu, and um, I'm really blessed uh, to train with him because uh, he brings the old school Jiu Jitsu uh, back into the modern Jiu Jitsu, which I was practicing. So uh, it's a good variety for me, and um, he's definitely, definitely preparing me the right way. I do private class with him, I do group class with him, I travel to his seminars, his workshops, everything like that, and um, he's definitely taken a very active role in uh, me personally, and obviously I'm his only female black belt, so that's another important thing. I would say my entire life uh, revolves around jujitsu. Um, it's my primary purpose, I would say. I train jujitsu all the time. I own my own academy, so basically it's everything. <laughs> girls in my division for ABI. I've actually competed against most of them already. I feel pretty strong uh, going in against them, but I know they're excellent, and I know they're training hard, but I guess we all are. I would say that the female matches are extremely fast and have a lot of heart. Like, I would say that the female matches go like, Everyone wants to win. Like they want to beat the other person and they're extremely technical. Females obviously have, you know, better flexibility in some areas and um, they focus more on the technical aspect for sure. The money takes a huge factor into uh, what I'm going to do with EBI. I'm obviously taking my preparation a lot more seriously because um, when money's involved, obviously everyone wants to win, right? So uh, it's important that we keep that in our mind so that we work hard and then obviously the results will follow and you'll obviously get the money. So I'm excited about that. If I were to be the first female EBI champion, it would feel absolutely amazing because that's an incredible accomplishment. Um, being just there and invited is really exciting for me, but I really want to put on my best performance and I know I would feel like really proud of myself if I were to do that. I think that I'm in a good position to win EBI because I feel like I really prepare the right way. Like I put in countless hours, I have great training partners, I'm surrounded by people that have won EBI, they're passing their knowledge to me, and um, I have great instruction. A variety of instruction is gonna help me and the training partners, and obviously uh, the harder I work, the better I'm gonna do. Catherine Shen entered the 10PQ EBI 12 10th Planet qualifier as the biggest underdog in the whole tournament. And she shocked everybody, won the whole thing. Here comes EBI 12. Again, she's gotta be considered the biggest underdog. Just got her purple belt. Uh, we've had purple belts compete in EBI before. Can she shock the world? We'll see. Um, I just competed um, at the EBI qualifiers where all of the best 10 Planet girls come to compete for the last spot in EBI and got promoted under Boogie um, to a purple belt right after. Honestly, it hasn't even registered yet. <laughs> There's just so many talented girls that, um, I mean, I was hopeful, but... I definitely feel like my style is a lot like Boogie's as I'm his student and I learn a lot of transitions from like vice grip, like Japanese necktie, Peruvian, Darcy's, those are all my favorite. Recently I've been getting into more leg locks. I've never been super good at leg locks, but recently I've been like falling in love with them, so. I'd probably be so bad at escaping log locks if I wasn't as flexible as I am. Um, I just feel like the 10 planet system is just so unique and flexibility does really help with a lot of the moves that we're big on. It definitely opens up a lot more opportunities and just so many more moves that you can do. 
like rubber guard and like my escaping leg locks. It's really helpful to me to have that flexibility. There's a lot of escapes that I can do. I probably wouldn't be able to do without flexibility. Go, 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 go. People will leave things open and I'm just trying to stay tight until they leave something open and that's when I, like, I'm constantly like waiting for that and looking for that um, during my matches. And just focusing on defense until there's an opportunity to attack. Yeah, defense is huge because I feel like I go a lot against people that are a lot stronger than me. Especially in EBI with such advanced girls, I feel like defense is going to be huge and just waiting for an opportunity. I'm probably more calm than I should be when I'm in a bad position. I'm just constantly looking for how to escape and what I can do after that. It's definitely going to be a huge challenge. There's a lot of really talented girls in that bracket. I'm just going to have to keep calm and think about one match at a time. I grew up in a family of martial arts. My uncle is Benny the Jet. My aunt and my uncle have had a big influence on my jiu-jitsu career. My aunt is the sports commissioner of California. My uncle is very big on boxing. He's coached a lot. My dad is also very into jiu-jitsu and all of my siblings used to be in it, but I decided to stay. I compete at least a couple times a month. I feel like every time I compete, it pushes my game so much farther than if I didn't and it keeps me in the competing mindset for big tournaments like this. I usually train for an hour and a half to two hours in the morning and um, maybe four hours in the afternoon, depending on the day, what I'm doing. I try to get at least two to three classes in every day um, when I can. Belt rank doesn't really intimidate me. I feel like at a certain level, it's up for like, I don't know, I've seen, I've seen like blue belts tap out black belts before, so it's definitely a little bit intimidating. Um, I know that a lot of the people are very um, impressive and well-developed jiu-jitsu players, but um, it's not going to make me give any less of a good performance. Christina Barlan is a high-level IBJJF black belt who jumped in almost immediately when the announcements were made for an all-girl show. Uh, anybody representing Kyle Terra, you know, they're coming to win the whole thing. Um, my name is Christina Barlan, and I train under Kyle Terra in San Jose, California. I currently am a black belt, have been training for 10 years, be this year in October. Most of the tournaments I do is going to be in, in the gi and I feel like sometimes there's a lot of pressure for me to perform a certain way because that's where my expertise lies but with no gi I, I feel like I can be a lot uh, more free and more fun and, and when that happens then my jujitsu just kind of just kind of flows out and it's just a different experience. I, ca I can't say like love hate but it's definitely a challenge still. <laughs> and being able to do things like jujitsu it's like, no, there's a place for me. This is, this is who I am. And that show, that presentation, it's not just the fight, it's the person, it's me. That's my soul, that's my passion, that's my heart. And winning, it's like, yes, you are on the right, right path. You are doing what you are supposed to. You are fulfilling your calling, you're fulfilling your purpose, and you're getting compensated for it. I, I, it's like it's not even about being like winning prize money it's being compensated because we put in so much work it is so hard what we do that hustle you have to travel you know to all these different places give up time with your family give up time with your friends and constantly having to explain why you can't eat at this gathering or why you can't go to that birthday party why you can't go to uh, hang out to this barbecue and you have the, oh, I have to diet, and I have to train, and I have to, you know, like, oh, you're always doing those things. And I'm like, yes, because that's worthwhile, and that is how I thrive. I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive, and I want to live, and I want to uh, be living fully, and 
And that is the epitome of what it means to, to fight or to perform or to, or to be out there and you had the spotlights on you. And for that moment, for however long, it's gonna be 10 minutes or 20 minutes or an hour, whatever it is, it's like, this is me, this is my soul. And there's something that I want because I deserve it. We're not there for the party, we're there for the prize. And, and to be able to say that, you know what, what I do is important and what I do makes a difference and what I do pays the bills. What I do is, is essentially what I'm supposed to do. Even though some of the women who are gonna be in the division I fought before, I don't know what it's gonna be like to fight them under these circumstances, like no gi, with submission only and different rules and even just a different venue, like it's not an arena like at the pyramid or it's not like, you know, on a mat where you walk in and, and you have the bleachers and you have people yelling. It, it, it's different because it's, it's, it's a show. And I feel like that's something that feels like home for me. Like you have these women who are coming in and a lot of the women who are gonna be competing on this card, they really exemplify the lifestyle of the, of the grappler, of the submission fighter. And it's cool, it's really, really, really cool. People have been asking for it and I'm so happy that um, I can be a part of that, not just for me, but for the legacy that's gonna leave behind for other women to be able to be part of that. And, and know that, hey, you know, we were the pioneers or, or we were the ones that stepped in and I answered the call. I'm like, you know, this is what we want. We've been asking for it. You've been asking for it. Let's, let's give the best show we can possibly do so that we can keep doing this for as long as we can. I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive and I want to live and I want to uh, be living fully. And, and that is the epitome of what it means to, to fight or to perform, or to, or to be out there and you had the spotlights on you, and for that moment, for however long, it's gonna be 10 minutes, or 20 minutes, or an hour, whatever it is, it's like, this is me, this is my soul, and there's something that I want because I deserve it. <laughs> About five years ago, I was at this small no-gi tournament in El Paso, and that's where I first saw Gabby Romero just rip through every boy, just embarrassing every boy. And I always remembered her from that. And you know, then she started doing MMA, she ended up doing an EBI against Lin Vong, bringing her back. I, um, I've always had faith in her. Her jiu-jitsu is super solid, she's strong as hell, uh, has a, a, a tremendous gymnastics background and I feel that she could do some serious damage and shock some people in this tournament. My name is Gabby Romero. I am a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu underneath Mark Bradford, Blue Bay Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I've been training for just about six years now. I am a professional MMA fighter, and my record is 2-1. Well, I've always been athletic. I was a gymnast for about 17 years, and I met, met a good friend of mine, Erin Fisher, and she had invited me in to a women's jiu-jitsu class on a Sunday afternoon. I tried it out and just fell in love with it. Been hooked ever since. I have a uh, very fast, aggressive, and submission-oriented style, which I think is very suited for ABI rules. Really looking forward to it. There's a lot of girls. It'll be a lot of fun. You know, I haven't even really looked that far ahead. I'm just going out there to have fun and try out what I do best and just take it one step at a time. I am always attacking for arms and things, so. You know, I'm never one to shy away from a challenge, and right now, that division, that's some of the best girls in the world right now. And it's fun. I love what I do, and I want to push myself and see what I can do with it. I 
I love a challenge and I love competing. It isn't really about the title or the money. I just want to go out there and do what I do best and push myself. Representing Gracie Baja, brown belt sensation Olympia Watts. I have never done anything like this before. Um, I actually look up to all the ladies on this card. Um, they are beyond my level, but I'm ready. I'm excited. I am uh, the opportunity. The opportunity presented itself to me, so I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna run with it. I am a brown belt under Professor Vinicius Magales, aka Draculino and I train at Gracie Baja, Texas. I've been training, I want to say, maybe for about six years now. When I give it my best and I can accomplish something that I set a goal to for that day, I know I've, uh, I've had a victory for that day. You know, you adapt to what's given to you. So I, I don't have a style. I just I just go with what's given to me and I give what I what I have. I had heard of EBI before. I never thought I would actually do a tournament where it was, you know, these rules and um, I always compete gi, you know, IBJJF rules. And so now that, you know, there's knee reap, heel hook. We just have to adapt. Um, that's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. If you cannot adapt, you can't grow. So, you know, a good jiu-jitsu player, a good jiu-jitsu uh, martial artist is going to be able to just go with whatever is given to them. This is, this is very exciting because I have to learn more. I have to think more about not putting my foot here or you know even if I am gonna lose a position there's gonna be no points maybe I'll give a position to see if there's something there so it's just a game changer but we adapt at first I was like man I, I, that's not it's I've never done this before it's not my weight class this is a totally different weight class 10 pounds heavier but the opportunity it was presented to me I'm gonna take it why not? It, I'd be dumb to not take advantage of this great, great, great opportunity that was presented to me. Man, what am I going to do when I get there with these women? But I am excited. When you're in there, you just get in the zone. You don't even, it doesn't matter who's watching, who's not watching, but man, just to have the you know an audience watching these females with some great jiu-jitsu skills you know compete in this it's a great it's a great thing for me you're going to expect to see a lot of heart i'm going to leave it all on the mat so i'm going to leave it all there that's all i'm going to say leticia hibero contacted me who happens to be one of the greatest female bjj practitioners of all time she has a prodigy that, that uh, she wants to unleash on the world, a brown belt, Gabby McComb. She asked me to a slide her in, and unfortunately when she first asked, the card was filled, but we had a couple dropouts to injuries recently, so boom, here she is, she gets her chance. And um, as far as I hear from Leticia Ribeiro, um, they expect to win this whole thing. I have 19 years old. É, no Brasil, eu morava em Manaus, Amazonas. Eu vim pra cá faz um ano. É, vim com o intuito de treinar, viver a vida com jiu-jitsu. Porque no Brasil tá um pouco difícil, né? E agora, na minha cidade, era mais difícil ainda, porque é um pouco longe das maiores competições no Brasil. Então, já faz um ano que eu tô aqui morando. E é isso aí. É, eu vim pra cá com 18 anos, acho que eu tava com 18, acabei de fazer 18. É, eu vim pra cá muito nova, mas com o intuito de viver a vida com o Jiu Jitsu, porque quando eu vim pra cá a primeira vez eu tinha 15 anos e eu vi aqui como tudo era e 
olhando minha cidade, olhando o Brasil como estava, pensei assim, se eu quero viver do jiu-jitsu no Brasil não vai ter como. Então foi isso que botou na minha cabeça, ah, eu já vou acabar minha escola e já vou vir para cá morar. Então foi meio difícil a transição para cá, porque é difícil separar da família, eu era muito nova, essas coisas. Então depois disso, que eu vim decidida, já foi mais fácil, porque eu já estava na minha cabeça que eu ia vir, nem ia fazer faculdade, nem nada no Brasil. Isso deixou perturbar, é, perturbado minha família um pouco, mas depois que eu estou aqui, já estou um ano, estou conseguindo ver minha vida, estou na faixa marrom, daqui a pouco pega preta. Então as coisas vão adiantar um pouquinho mais fácil depois disso. Estou levando. É, como fazer dinheiro aqui com jiu-jitsu é assim. Tem várias competições que são pagas, tem a Abu Dhabi, competições de Abu Dhabi, tem competições como o EBI, que está fazendo premiação de dinheiro também, tem Five Grappling, tem várias outras coisas que fazem com que a gente se mantenha aqui. E eu também estou com visto de atleta, isso faz com que eu me mantenha aqui também. E é um pouquinho dali, um pouquinho dali, trabalhando nas competições também. Quase todo fim de semana, de vez em quando, a gente está nas competições trabalhando. Então, uma coisa de cada vai fazendo que a gente se vire aqui. Então, é a correria. Eu não, não, não competi tanto no Gui, mas eu treino também. É uma coisa um pouco difícil, porque trabalha bastante cardio e é muita movimentação. Mas, para mim, eu acho que não é tão diferente do Jiu-Jitsu, porque até no Jiu-Jitsu eu não consigo ficar parada. No, já é uma coisa boa para mim. A diferença de finalização já é um pouco diferente, porque no jiu-jitsu eu acho que é mais fácil de você segurar para finalizar essas coisas. No nogi escorrega, no nogi movimenta. Então é um desafio muito grande, que aí você tem que fazer um pouquinho de força, movimentar e ir para porrada para poder pegar. É, para mim vai ser acho que uma oportunidade muito boa e vai ser tipo. É, Primeira vez, praticamente assim, porque eu estou competindo com a faixa preta, faixa marrom, faixa roxa, tudo junto. Então é a primeira vez que eu vou fazer um campeonato desse jeito. É um pouco é, novo para mim, mas aí tá tranquilo. Eu acho muito bom competir com uma graduada, que eu acho, sei lá, você vai, mas você não tem aquela, é como que se diz, preocupação, aquele peso nas suas costas. Você vai lá para dar seu melhor, sair na porrada e isso aí. O resultado que vier é consequência. Então. Eu vou lá fazer minha parte, se der tudo certo, deu, se não der, treinar mais para a próxima. Mas eu estou gostando bastante da oportunidade de estar tá indo. É uma coisa que vai treinar meu, minha, minha personalidade para os próximos campeonatos. E é isso aí. My name is Nikki Sullivan and I'm competing out of Nice Guy Submission Fighting in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, I've been training for almost eight years and I'm a brown belt. I've won the Nogi Pan Amps twice. Uh, in April I was a finalist at the ADCC West Coast Trials and I've won the Fight to Win Pro, both Gi and Nogi. I've had the opportunity to train with several of the other women in this bracket, and I have a lot of respect for them. They're all super tough. It's gonna be a really awesome show. Uh, I really like to keep moving and just attack the submission. Uh, right now I'm training at Nice Guy Submission Fighting, and they're very sub-only, Nogi-based. Um, but I also just came off of a one-month training camp at Atos in San Diego, and so I feel like right now I'm ready for whatever any of these girls could throw at me. Uh, I think the EBI is great. It's a really cool opportunity for athletes in Jiu-Jitsu to showcase their abilities on a big stage. It's an opportunity for us to get paid for what we do. Uh, I love that they focus on the submission and attacking the submission. Being a part of the first all-female EBI is a really big deal for me. Um, since I've started, women's jiu-jitsu has grown so much, and this, to me, just feels like a huge breakthrough 
for women's jiu-jitsu in general. Um, we have an opportunity to make history right now, and it's really exciting. You know, there are women in this bracket that I've looked up to for a really long time, and it's just an honor to be sharing the stage with them. Uh, I do jiu-jitsu because I love it, because I want to be on those mats every day, and, you know, I love every part of it. I love the blood, the sweat, and the tears. I believe that this is a talent God has given to me, and I just try um, to do it with all my heart. Uh, you can expect to see me go out there and give it my all, uh, fight my heart out. I, I'm not a quitter, and uh, I just want to go have fun and show what I can do. My name's Fionn Davis and I'm a brown belt. I've been training for nearly four years at CF24 Jiu Jitsu Academy that I help run and we're affiliated with East Coast Jiu Jitsu Academy in Dublin, Ireland. I started uh, judo when I was really young and I did that for almost 10 years and then I lost my passion for judo and then ended up finding uh, MMA. And when I was doing MMA, I started to prefer doing Jiu Jitsu classes instead of the striking classes. And then I just ended up committing full time to Jiu Jitsu. I'd say my style is probably that of an old man because I'm quite slow, I like pressure passing and I enjoy clothes scarf. My speciality would probably be takedowns, um, mainly because of my judo background, I think that would give me a bit of an advantage there. And as for leg locks, I really, I do enjoy them, but I wouldn't base my game around them. I just like to put a dash of leg locks in there. One occasion. Uh, I love EBI. I'm really excited to be fighting on this show, especially as this is my second submission only show ever. The first one was somewhere in the UK when I was a blue belt. And this is a lot different to that, so I'm pretty excited. So it's going to be a big challenge, and it's a rule set that I wanted to compete in for a really long time. I like the overtime rules mainly because both the positions that we start from are my favourite places to submit from. I love arm bars and I love attacking from the back. Proof, take his arm across his face. So I snap forward. Jiu Jitsu is my life, I don't do anything else. I train every day, I help run the academy as well. We've been running it for almost a year. I'm one of the instructors, I run the women's only programme. I didn't expect when I started running it for so many girls to join the academy. I don't think, I don't know if they'd even have started Jiu Jitsu otherwise and that would have been really terrible because they've become so confident in starting the classes and um, yeah, it just makes me feel really emotional, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's really important to me. Um, I want to start running teens classes as well, so I'll probably get extra emotional at things like that. So yeah. yeah I do this for the title, but the money would be fantastic. I would probably fix the hole in the wall at the back of the gym that I just looked at. Because <laughs> the wall is like rotting. Um, like it's not fallen through yet, but it's like rotting. So like if we could fix that, that'd be really nice. <laughs> I'm really excited to fight them. I'm excited. I'm really excited. First round, we to fight. We unleashed combat jiu-jitsu in EBI 11, and the response was insane. Uh, I think there's a, a serious potential for combat jiu-jitsu to just take hold of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community and just get them obsessed, I really do. Uh, it's the most honest form of jiu-jitsu before MMA. You know, I mean, when you add palm strikes, yes, there's no elbows, yes, there's no knees, but those palm strikes keep your jujitsu a little honest. And the response was just tremendous. If you haven't seen EBI 11, you haven't seen it, go back and watch that. You still got time, go watch that. Nick Honestein, Chad George, Sheridan Moran, and J.M. Holland went to war. It was a historic event. You know, here we come. This is the second time. We've only done it once. We're gonna do it again, and it's during the all-female show. So we're gonna have a 16-woman regular EBI rules tournament with, with stars, Patty Fontes, Talita Alencar, uh, 
Christina Barlon, Tammy Musumichi. Uh, it's gonna be insane. But don't be surprised if that four woman combat jiu-jitsu tournament, boom, just rises above it all. I mean, it's it did in EBI 11. That was just an insane display of jiu-jitsu, you know, on those open mats and palm strikes. It's pretty crazy. We have Brooke Mayo, Elima Lay McFarlane from Bellator Star, representing 10th Planet San Diego. We got um, Celine Haga and Amy Montenegro, both from Invicta, both who had the craziest match of all time, possibly, where uh, uh, they both they they both got saved by the bell in submissions. It's insanity. So in my MMA match with Amy Montenegro, we had a very competitive fight, which went back and forth. She almost had an armbar on me uh, at the end of the first round. And then in the third round, uh, I got a choke on her the last seconds. And she was basically unconscious when the fight was over. But the fight went to the ref decision and she won a decision. I'm excited to get the rematch with Amy Montenegro in Combat Jiu Jitsu EBI to showcase that I am the better grappler and I will finish her again and I want that uh, let the decision go to the ref. You can expect to see an aggressive style going for a lot of submissions, using a lot of slaps, either to open up for the submissions or going for the TKO knockout. Everything I'm going to do is going to be 110%. And I really want to prove that my grappling is Top notch. I've been training with a lot of bigger girls and guys uh, because I know that I'm probably going to be the smallest person in this tournament. Um, I've been working with a lot of slaps to just change my style, uh, have a few surprises, working a lot on finishes and takedowns. I think the advantages I have are my coaches and my training partners. I have some of the best people to train with here. Uh, MMA fighters who have been giving me a challenge when it comes to the ground pound or slaps in this case. And my coach has been there for me, working with me, wrestling, grappling. So I'm prepared. I had been training in MMA for a long time and I kind of had felt myself coming at a standstill or like a plateau type thing and I really wanted to expand my game and Jiu Jitsu was one way that I heard people were able to sharpen their technique and I ended up falling in love with Jiu Jitsu as a sport. Um, instead of, oh I want to do Jiu Jitsu to make my ground better for MMA, now I just do Jiu Jitsu because I love it. A martial art regimented into my life is very important. I need the structure, I need the discipline. Um, Jiu-Jitsu in itself is, I think, the best martial art. It's, you know, um, it's known as the gentle art. You can, um, I don't know what though, I don't know what to say. I just love it. <laughs> as a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner, I think that the combat jiu-jitsu is going to help to, um, one, distract your opponent, two, frustrate them, and three, it's going to help set up your submissions. Um, I'm excited about it. <laughs> Nobody cares about points because there's no point system, so everybody's literally trying to finish their opponent. Um, there's going to be 
you know, people doing risky moves, stuff that they think they're going to surprise the other person with, um, and they don't have to worry about uh, losing points because of getting swept or getting their guard passed. There's uh, Elima McFarlane, there's Brooke Mayo, and then there's Celine Haga. So Celine is the girl that I just fought in my last Invicta fight. So I imagine there's a good chance that Celine and I may go in the first round and they may put the other two girls together in the first round and um, then we'll have a chance to battle it out. EBI style. I'm not gonna prepare for one single person because if I get caught up thinking that I'm gonna face this girl and you know maybe she's gonna end up on the other side of the bracket, maybe we won't go against each other at all. So um, it's best for me to to work my game. Uh, I feel like the playing field is like dead even um, with the other girls that are in the combat jiu-jitsu bracket because we're all professional MMA fighters. So I feel like um, we're all gonna be able to deal with getting hit. It's a profession for all of us, so um, it's gonna be just who does it best. Having gone through some of the training for this and getting slapped um, in the gym, I imagine that when I get slapped the first time uh, out there that I will be a little bit mad because getting slapped is a little bit offending. <laughs> EBI is submission only, so there's literally, you only can win if you submit your opponent. And then the, the overtime rules is a completely different game, but... Um, My family is awesome. We are all included in um, my growth and development as a martial artist because we are all martial artists. My stepdaughters, my husband and I, um, we all train, we all work hard, we all compete, um, we all uh, work hard for the, for the gym and help the gym to, to grow. Um, so my family is everything. To possibly be the first combat jiu-jitsu champion um, is kind of mind-blowing. To be a participant in EBI uh, just in the first place is mind-blowing in itself. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but um, I'm going full force. I don't think that any martial artist does it for the money. Um, there's not a lot of money in competing in martial arts. Um, of course, when you get to the very top tiers, the Ronda Rousey's and the Conor McGregor's and Floyd Mayweather, they're making a lot of money, but uh, the average martial artist, no. I mean, we're doing it because we love it or else, you know, if, if, we, didn't, uh, if we didn't love what we were doing, then we would be out working a nine to five, making, making money that way. To make money as a martial artist, you really have to work hard. Really, really have to work hard, and then you're not, you're still just barely treading water. So I don't think anybody's doing it for the money. Um, yeah, I'm doing it for, um, for the love of the sport, and uh, because I want to win, because I have a competitive drive, so. When Eddie asked me, if I wanted to do the combat jiu-jitsu portion instead, I immediately was like, yes, because not only is it already historic that it's an all-female EBI, but also the combat jiu-jitsu portion, I think is like almost one step above. I am a purple belt under Richie and Gio Martinez, the Freak Brothers, here at 10 Planet San Diego, and I've been training under them for about four years. Honestly, I actually don't do a lot of tournaments, and I think that uh, a lot of that has to do with my fight schedule. I'm also an MMA fighter, and you know, MMA is how I make my money. It's kind of my first priority. So if I have a fight coming up, then I, I kind of won't do any jiu-jitsu tournaments. In MMA, I'm actually a flyweight fighter, so 125, that, that's my division, and I fight for Bellator MMA. I'm currently 6-0 and and 5-0 um, in the Bellator cage. 
This tournament's really big and I'm so honored to be competing in the first of its kind, you know, the first female EBI, as well as the first combat jiu-jitsu with females. I think uh, it's almost, it's pretty much up there. Same as a fight for me. Gosh, honestly, getting slapped sucks, you know? Some people are like, oh, you know, that's so lame, combat jiu-jitsu, like, who slaps people? But you can literally rupture somebody's eardrum with a well-placed slap to the ear, you know? And uh, they've been teaching me different techniques, like, just like a little cup, and like, spots, and eh, and so I've been doing like a lot of slapping exercises. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know, honestly, it, it actually seems scarier to me for some reason. I think it's it's because it's unfamiliar territory. You know, I've never actually been in a slap fight before. If we're in side control or something and you are you have a girl down, then you can, you can slap the shit out of her face. I think that would be really sore. So far, nobody has really done that to me. I feel like my partners have been really nice to me in training. I keep telling them like, it's okay, you can slap me. Cause you know, in MMA, when we have somebody down, we're really punching them because we're trying to make it as realistic as possible. And once you start punching somebody, then they start moving, you know? Preparing for combat jujitsu is really much like preparing for a fight. You know, you're, you can get hit anytime. So working on specific moves that are tailored for combat jiu-jitsu and tailored for MMA. So I think the transition is a little easy. Preparation has been really awesome. Boogie has been showing me crazy moves that he comes up with that's like, see, so here you can trap her arm and just slap her face, you know, and she can't defend it, so. He'll, you know, help us make little adjustments here and there for the people that aren't flexible. And I think that's the beauty of the system as well, is that it's constantly evolving and, and yeah, it constantly has little adjustments that you can make for those people who you know, can't Lotus or like weren't a b-boy in their previous life, so. Yeah, just establishing position, staying out of danger rather than trying to go for, you know, unnecessary slaps, I think. You, whenever somebody's trying to punch you, they have to release the pressure in order to um, come back down with a strike. So anytime that you're raising up to punch somebody or slap somebody in this case, you're releasing the pressure and control you have over them, and it gives them a small um, window of opportunity to escape or catch you with something. So I think when I say unnecessary slaps, it's like slaps that aren't really gonna be inflicting any damage and, and uh, might even be giving up your position. I've seen her fight, and this is, and she's good at jujitsu, so this is just gonna be all of her like best things in one. I don't think anyone's gonna be able to take her down. I don't kick in fighting, so it's like, yeah, like she said, I'm all about upper body, so I think it'll be, it'll be to my advantage. And we have Brooke Mayo, who's also on Bellator. Two girls from Bellator, two girls from Invicta, going at it, slapping each other, palm striking each other. It's gonna be mayhem. I'm gonna prove myself, you know, that time. I'm not gonna think what people think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go there and to finish the job that I started on ABI for. I really wanna put on a good show. Uh, for everybody and just show the world that my jiu-jitsu is good and what I've been working on and what the women can do as well. It's not about the ankles, it's not about getting a crank. We have to learn how to break the leg. I feel like EBI is the most straightforward, black and white, like, it's you either win or you lose. There's not like, oh, the ref did this, the ref did that, because the ref's not involved. I just want to go out there and perform. It's like not win, lose, it just, I just want to perform and, and, and that's like the biggest voice in the back of my head or in, in like in my ear. Came here for Jiu Jitsu so I would not take anything else, you know? I want to try the most of the grappling, you know, in any room, you know? So I like grappling in any room, so. So just to be included in the mix of the girls who are like some of the black belt world champions, like just to be in the mix of them is just amazing to me, so. 
to even think about being EBI female champion would just be, I can't even think about it. Not only is it already historic that it's an all-female EBI, but also the combat jiu-jitsu portion, I think is like almost one step above. I imagine that when I get slapped the first time uh, out there, that I will be a little bit mad.